It's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I got two cool trucks for you today. I have a 2022 GMC Sierra Denali Ultimate, and I have a 2022 Toyota Tundra Limited, this guy right here. Now, if you know, I bought the Limited for the channel. I've been reviewing it for the year. Lots of videos in this, lots of towing, lots of mile per gallon comparisons. But in this video, I want to tell you five things that this truck has. I wish this truck has. Now I'm gonna be as practical as I can and I'm gonna cut through some of the trim level stuff. So this is the Denali Ultimate, highest trim level ever for GMC Sierra. This is the limited, not highest trim level, the new one is the Capstone. There's $20,000 difference between these trucks. 60 and 80, I'm gonna skip that. I'm gonna tell you five things. Let's go and start with all that right now. Okay, let's start back here to something I've been criticizing Toyota's design team at Kalti about this. And this is right here. This is ridiculous. This is awesome. So, foot here, lean up, I grab a hand hold here, and I'm just, I'm look at how high I am, right? Going right into bed. No problem there, even for five foot six self mine, five seven, five eight boots on, whatever the hell I am, I'm shrinking, I think I get older. Now, for this step here, we have to go a little bit lower. So, this is a manual operating step, you have to buy it separately, and higher trim levels does come standard, and they actually do have a powered version as well on like a capsule or something like that. But, anyways, so if I go here, now here's the question. Here, I don't have any spot, I gotta go here move this down, I can tighten that up, I can go here. Okay, but now I'm in kind of bizarro land. <laughs> what do I do? do I, go, I go here and I turn my leg and holy cow is that hot. And then I gotta, I gotta go, yeah. Um, I don't know, you gotta go like here, 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 here to do that. Now, or I can drop the tailgate. I can go here, here, and this one, I have the multi-pro tailgate. Go here, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here, I can go here to here, I can go here, I can go here, 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 and I can get in that way. So man, it seems like this has got a lot more options and easier to get in the bed than that, but I don't really have much. I mean, I do have the clever trick here, right? So, which I gotta say, I've owned this truck for about six months now. I think I've used that twice. When I had a GMC Sierra for a week, I've used this uh, more than twice. Okay, the second thing that this truck has, the GMC Sierra, I wish the Toyota Tundra has, I'm gonna get to it right now because it's hot out here. I'm gonna get inside the cabin to be honest with you. It's gonna be right in here. So, I tend to play a lot of golf, just that's what I do. And so when I have the golf clubs in here and the seats up, I have plenty of room, but also something interesting happens. It's flat. See how flat that is? Pull this up. I have a flat floor here. It's mostly flat. There's a small bump, not a big deal there. I do have some storage here, not a lot, but some underneath the seat. But that flat rolling floor, I mean, golf clubs, luggage, groceries. Oh my goodness. Groceries are awesome with a flat loading floor. Uh, you don't have to worry about humps and things happening as far as groceries flying around. So groceries, golf clubs, baggage, hunting stuff. I don't know. Most of that stuff fits in there. Let's go check out the Tundra. Okay. When you get in the Tundra, you have not a flat loading floor. That's a big hump. So my bags sit like this, they rock a little bit. Uh, look, we put groceries in here, it's kind of a pain in the butt. I do have some storage back here, but look, it's so much storage that yeah, I can fit rifles and things like that and shotguns and stuff, but you know, I'd rather have more floor space and a flat floor for, well, what I do with the truck when I go grocery shopping, when I take my golf clubs, when I carry my cargo when it baggage. So I put luggage back here and luggage slides all over the place, sits up, moves. This would be nice. Just this is all like a flat loading floor, just a variety of reasons. And so that's number two thing I wish that uh, Tundra had that GMC Sierra has. 
Okay, number three is gonna be inside the truck. Let's go ahead and hop in. And when I get in to the truck and I close the door, I hit my cool. It's right there. Now, what in the world am I talking about? Let me tell you. I turned the heated steering heat or cooled seats, excuse me, I turned the cooled seats off before I got out of this truck because I wanted to test it. So right now it shows uh, 98 degrees on the inside thermometer, right? So it's hot outside. <laughs> it's very hot. And I noticed this this morning playing golf and stuff. Uh, what's really cool about it is the truck has a software to detect when it's hot outside and it turns on the cooled seats for you, which are currently taking effect, <laughs> nice and cool. Um, and it turns them on for you, which is just a nice feature. It's, does, is, it, is it a big deal to hit in the Tundra and press the button? No, it's not a big deal to turn the cold seats on the button. But it is nice when I'm, I get in and I'm trying to cool things off, I'm trying to get my head straight what I'm gonna do, check my emails, that kind of stuff. The truck already realizes it's hot, hello, and I probably want cold seats on. And I would imagine in the wintertime when it's cold, guess what? It turns on heated seats, which again, BS little feature, but for the, for the life of ownership of this truck and things you're gonna do with this truck, and as a, as a consumer owning this, it's just that little nice thing, it's just that little more premium feel to it that I don't get the Tundra. Okay, before we get back to the Tundra, I wanna look at one more thing in here. I'm gonna talk about something that you guys have talked about in the comments. I do agree, it is right here. I have auto four-wheel drive. I have two four-wheel drive, two high, and four low. And so auto four-wheel drive. Now, who cares about that? Well, a lot of customers care about that. So what auto four-wheel drive does is it's a system that when you sense wheel slippage in the front, it'll engage all four tires and basically put the truck in four high. And so you can drive around with that auto four-wheel drive on, on higher speeds. Typically you wanna leave it on for slippier roads. You wanna have a little bit, cause auto four-wheel drive works better when things are slick because you send any torque to the tires, the way the system engages, doesn't put so much uh, stress on the transfer case. But I can tell you, I know a lot of customers that drive with that on all the time. You never know we're gonna hit like a bunch of sand on the road, a bunch of rocks. Maybe you looking over here at the birds and all of a sudden you come off the road a little bit and instead of losing control, your truck is more under control because you have four wheel drive on because you have all torqued all four wheels. Now, Toyota could have done that and I don't know why they didn't because it's just, it's a button and it's software. The truck has four wheel drive, but in software and everybody's kind of doing it. Uh, Ford has auto four wheel drive, uh, GM has auto four wheel drive and I just don't understand while that wasn't part of the decision making to just add that little feature, then give that customer that peace of mind. You know, when it's getting nasty out or when you're in concerns or if you're just a cautious driver, just turn it on. It doesn't really impact fuel economy that much unless you drive with it all the time, 24 seven, you're doing all this stuff, you'll lose a little bit mile per gallon there. But in most cases, most guys I talk to that own these trucks, it's on all the time because, well, why not? Okay, let me turn on the cooled seats down back in my Tundra. And I will tell you, what's interesting with these cooled seats from the Tundra is how loud they get. The uh, GMC Sierra isn't nearly as loud, but the Tundra is loud. And I've had people actually talk about uh, concerns about air coming in the cabin and making whistling noise. And it turns out it was the cooled seats. That's what they found out was the culprit. Because it, it does get pretty loud, but they do work nice. So that's the thing. The last thing I want to talk about is visibility. And let's talk about this. Because typically in trucks, visibility is awesome. You're sitting up higher, you have much viewpoint. And by the way, that's Scott Swift National Monument. You are on the Oregon Trail. Did you die of dysentery? Anyways, so looking at visibility, what's interesting with this is I'm just going to play on the camera back to where I'm basically my head's even with it. And we look out, we can see, we can basically have two windows. Window there, and then we have a smaller window here because the way this screen pops up and the way the mirror comes down, it's interesting, you can't even see the storage behind this as well. And I rarely ever use it because I can't see it. It's just out of, out of sight, out of mind. And then we have maybe another window there. And so if I take my hand, my hand at the top here, I'm going over the finger up top there. So I really probably got five, six inches there. And then here, you know, I don't know how to measure this by hand, but you know, it just, it, it, it is a little more of a tank. It's like tank turrets and windows. What do you want to say? And it's interesting because I did not even notice that as being a difference until I had a couple of colleagues reach out to me and they're asking me questions about this truck and we're talking about things. And they both had said to me, do you realize how much, how visibility is not that good in the Tundra? And I was like, what are you talking about? And so that occurred to me that really 
I don't know. It's interesting. Compared to other trucks, it's not as good. And so a spin around the block with the GMC Sierra, hmm, that was interesting. So let me go show you the GMC Sierra and make a decision for yourself. Okay, hopping in the GMC Sierra, which by the way has the towing tag here, which I love. Another thing I love, I wish my truck had, was the towing by VIN number it gives you the conventional towing, gives you payload, gives you all that kind of stuff. And it's just, it's handy, really handy. So climbing in here. All right, so let's get in here. And I really noticed this today. So look at what we got here. Look how much open, more open that feels. Now from here, see my hand going down to the dash? Not even close. I have much more room. It doesn't feel like it's even nearly as tight because this screen is down lower, a little bit wider actually, not as tall. It just seems like more usable and you have the vents up top. So it just has a much cleaner view to it. And you do get, well, it is much better visibility. It's, it's just, it's, it's, you know, it's crazy how high this comes. Like the Tundra, it was like here. This one goes here. So more visibility, more room here, more of a flatter dash. Now, does that make a big difference in the real world driving? Uh, sometimes, you know, like if you're going to, you want to look across the lane and see if somebody's that way, you're looking to the right to turn or something like that. You do get a little bit more visibility here than you do with, with the Tundra. It's not, look, it's not a deal breaker. It's not something I'd buy that one truck over the other, but it just is a very curious thing that I didn't even notice until I got in the GMC Sierra. All right, in case you're wondering, there are a couple things I do like with the Tundra over the GMC Sierra. It's, one of them is this. Like, what the heck, GMC? Why can't you do a panoramic moonroof? I know people have criticisms about it. They hate the idea that it may leak or something. That's 1970 sunroof, by the way. Uh, today's sunroof's much better. They don't leak as much. And it makes the cabin really dark. I also don't like that there's no hand place up here. My hand just falls off. In the Tundra, this is a flat surface there. You put your hand up there, you rest it on there. And I do drive a lot like this, especially across Nebraska, Wyoming, flat country roads, driving like this because, well, a lot of open territory. <laughs> there's not much to worry about there. So there's a couple things. And I know people in the comments can say, well, look at those tow hooks on the GMC Sierra. Aren't, you know, the Tundra doesn't have them. Well, I'm sorry, these tow hooks on the Sierra, Denali Ultimate, are full chrome, like a chrome covering. And uh, I would theorize nobody's gonna use those because the first time you're gonna use them, you're gonna crack the chrome, or you're gonna rub it off, or you're gonna do something to the chrome, chip it, whatever. And so I think that in this case, the GMC Sierra, sorry, I think the tow hooks are just for looks in this truck. All right, one more little snippet. The video I did with the cracked seats in the Toyota Tundra, you may have seen that video. I'm seeing more and more owners report cracking seats. Here in the Sierra, it's much better plastic, much hardier, much thicker, and I think that's gonna hold up better. And I'm surprised that Toyota, known for reliability, used a thin plastic there. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, like I said, I like this armrest on the Tundra. Panor moonroof, which is actually closed at the moment because it's too freaking hot today. But in the winter time, I'm telling you, it makes the cabin that much brighter, makes things less gloomy. It's really nice. And then this, you can see the difference here. You see that plastic is anywhere near as strong as that GMC Sierra. So, hmm. So those are my five things. So access to the bed. You know, the bed access is awesome. Uh, I have the auto full drive. I have the auto uh, turn on the cool seats, which by the way, these are quieter and they work a little bit better. Um, I have visibility as an issue as well. And I have the flat loading floor as five things I wish my Tundra had that the GMC Sierra has. What do you think? Do you agree, disagree? Put your comments down below. Make sure you check us on live streams Thursday night at 7 p.m. Central Time. We're doing a lot more of those. Also, check out the website, pickuptrucktalk.com. And Pickup Truck Talk down below with social media. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.